one cares. Okay, so for, first thing I do as I look at the overall commodities. Well, this is GCC. Um, in GCC, it's going down. Now, I want to check to see if GCC... Uh, there's a couple things I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to be overstretched or some kind of bullish pattern. So it's dropped a long ways, something where it's coming into a bottom. So that can be a pattern. It can be seasonality or um, it can be volume. I like to see volume spikes right here at the bottom. Well, whenever GCC drops more than I think it should, I start looking at commodities because there's an advantage I can do. Um, I'm basically going to look in pre-market tomorrow morning, and if the commodities are going up, I know exactly that um, Greenhaven's going to go up. So it, there's a really simple thing that you can do here. So I'll map it out. We'll go right here. Let's grab one of these. We're just going to say, um, oh, let's go step one. We're going to um, scan for over um, for any bullish pattern any bullish commodity pattern any bullish commodity pattern now the reason we're picking commodities is i'm naturally bullish commodities and they trade 24 hours they trade 24 hours a day they trade 24 hours a day and we have an advantage in the morning okay they trade 24 hours they they may run they may run before market opens before market opens um, and there's a formula that you can use. There's a thing called a correlation. A correlations work like this. You take FCX to um, high grade copper. High grade copper trades overnight and FCX will, will move a, um, a, a certain amount between that and high grade copper. So look, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to chart and I'm going to pull up high grade copper, which would be um, H, it would be HGC1. Um, that would be the continuation chart of high-grade copper in this platform I'm using. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up at the same time while that's loading, I want to bring up FCX because FCX I know is correlated to copper. FCX, okay. Now, um, before I do this, I got the way that this is set up, I have to go pick because this has 180 exchanges in it. I have to go pick which exchange I want to look at. So I'm going to come up here, and there's a couple different um, trades I could do. So I'm going to come in here. Um, I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to look for equities right here. That's South American equities. I don't want that. I want equities North American, and I want FCX, FCX, okay? So I'm really going to look for FCX. And this would be Freeport. That should pull it up, and I hope it doesn't make me pick the specific exchange. I hope it finds it. Okay, let's close this. Yeah, so this is um, Freeport. Now, what I'm going to do is this is a correlation. See this thing right here? I'm going to correlate this to a specific instrument. Now, this is kind of a, an old software package. This is correlated to NASDAQ, but I want to correlate it to high-grade copper. I just changed the symbol right there to high-grade copper. And what this will do is it, if you look at the top line, if it's above 80, if it's above 80 up here, it stays correlated. Okay, so right now we can state that Freeport McNamara is highly correlated to high-grade copper, and it should be. It, it should stay pretty well correlated to copper. The next thing I look at is over the last little bit, did the volume spike? Well, the volume spiked right here, here, and here. Well, I want to know if the volume hit at the bottom of this um, line or not. So, meaning I'm going to come up here, I'm going to change my um, screen so it brings on these little red and blue bars. And I'm going to switch this to a, a five-minute chart. All I'm going to look for is volume to be that big spike in volume that was three days ago. I want it to be at the lows of the candlestick. I don't want it to be at the highs of the candlestick like they sold it off. I want it to be at the lows of the candlestick. So I'm going to come in here and look. Intraday, it's been really correlated to that. But here's about each one of these is a day. One, two, three. And there, boom, there's it. But there's huge volume right here at the end of the day. That's where they put the bottom in. See where that M is? They put a solid bottom in on Freeport McNamara. This is one that we want to jump on, okay, um, tomorrow even, if, if high-grade copper is going up because – uh, what we did is we said all the GCC said all of the commodities are down. 
So all the commodities are overstretched. So I'm going to put this in our little notes. We're going to say, okay, um, scan for bullish commodities. Look at GCC. Really, to do this really quick, look at GCC. GCC or CRB. CRB. Now, the CRB CRB has been around for 56 years. CRB is called the Jeffrey, the Reuters, the Reuters Jeffries, um, Jeffries CRB. CRB. It's been around forever. Now, what this thing really does is it tells you, um, is that Reuters? Let's see, is the top one Reuters? I can't read it. It's kind of blurry on my screen. Reuters, um, Jeffries, um, it's Jeff, Jeffries. And I think that's spelled wrong on there. Jeffries CRB. This is all commodities grouped together. All commodities grouped together. Grouped together. So you get an overview of commodities grouped together. Now, what we're going to do is it's really simple. You're going to just look in the morning. You're going to look at HG because we picked this. HG is up. Is up. We will trade. Um, we will trade maybe um, high grade or FCX. Now, the reason is FCX is highly correlated to copper, is highly correlated, correlated to copper, okay, to, to copper prices, all right? Does that make sense? It's highly correlated to copper. I think copper is going to go um, correlated, okay? Now, there might be a better one. Let's look at silver because do you know what's going on tomorrow? Silver and gold also, silver and gold. Um, but maybe use but use the ETF. Now the reason I'm picking silver and gold to rise is the the um, the elections in um, what do you call it? Uh, Spain are going on. Spanish elections. Spanish elections. Um, this will cause people to go into a defensive mode. Okay, so if silver or gold's up, if silver or gold is up, is up overnight overnight trade them okay so um i'm going to go in here and i already have a scan set up this is a scan and these are looking for correlated and non-correlated silver and gold see where that says correlation silver and gold i'm going to go to um this i'm going to go to next it's going to take all the silver and gold stocks and it's going to scan them and there's 90 of them in the united states and it's it's scooting through here looking for some stocks to trade and all i want to do is my my goal is going to be to do this okay on the options this is one rock and trade that will work it works all the time um not all the time but it works pretty good i can't say all the time but it works good um, it'll treat you right that we're gonna when we find this we're gonna look for it to be we're gonna sell a put and buy a call okay minus one p plus 2c okay we're going to sell one put by two calls and when we when we get into this now this is scanning for these trades and what i'm going to look at is i'm betting a large directional move now i don't like out of the money puts because deep out of the money puts even though you might win when you lose you lose a lot when i win i win a lot because this thing will run up and i only want to hold the put for one or two days um, so if I can get over these Spanish elections, um, these puts to, to rise, I'll be happy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. These are looking for for stocks in this sector. Now, what this is telling me, this is um, these are all uncorrelated. What that means is they should pop right back into correlation. So um, let me explain that to you. This is a good one. I'm going to bring up some of these. These are all energy ones. It looks like I'm looking for silver ones. Basic energy. How did I grab energy ones? Those are all energy ones. I grabbed the wrong sector. Let me go back. Where does that say select all North American? No. Let's let's go back here. I got to go back. I grabbed the wrong sector when I scammed it. You click this little button, and I don't know how I, this one I was looking for silver. I'm going to go to next, and I just want to pick what sector. Oh, I was on the energy sector. I wasn't paying attention when I was talking to you. I got to rerun this. I'm looking for U.S. metals, like some kind of metals in here. We got to look for it. It'll say silver or metals. We didn't want energy ones. Looking for metals right down in here. Basic materials. 
Those are steel ones. These will be just about like that. Um, I should check it before I run it. I'm going to go back just a second. I need to check this before I run a scan because these will give me good ones. Oop, wrong button. I want to hit the. I hit one button off. Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's hit this button, and let's go into edit and let's just make sure it's correlated to silver. Silver, yeah, it's it's going. It, I'm just going to look at this through here. I want to make sure it's just looking at silver. Yeah, it is. It's taking a correlation of all these to silver. I don't know why I did the energy one. Next. Materials. Okay, we'll rerun it. So one of the things I can do is I know these stocks that, that should run in conjunction with silver. Well, if I can find um, some uncorrelated ones... I'd expect those to come back into correlation, meaning that they should run with silver if silver runs. So some of these might have a, a propensity to jump and, and run. There's 99 of them now. So I'm going to lay this out right here in our notes while it runs. Okay. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to put in here some vocabulary. Vocabulary. And we're going to say correlations. Correlations. These are below minus 50 not correlated not correlated they're negatively correlated negatively correlated this can be done in lots of different platforms negatively correlated correlated then above above um, 50 highly correlated highly correlated correlated this is a reading okay now um, what our learning objective here is learning objective is to um, use patterns use patterns um, on the come on we'll grab that in just a second we'll go back and look at it use patterns on the commodities commodities to find um, setups setups and confirm them in the pre-market based on correlation setups and confirm before the market even opens confirm them um, in the pre-market in the pre-market um, before it even opens before it even opens even opens does that make sense so this is what we're going to do we're going to try to set these up and this will give us an edge it'll be totally an edge so the, the skill we're really working on is um, trade identification identification and the trade identification the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scan for a bully setup on the on that we're going to look at the crb um, then we're going to pick up some of these. Okay, the CRB is just components of these. Well, one of the components of the CRB, I think it's like 16, 12, or 16 percent, or 16 percent is um, metals. Now, um, CRB uh, gives you the HG. That's what led us to FCX. It's highly correlated. They're silver and gold ones. We can all look at these. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm now scanning step two. Step two, I'm scanning. I am scanning for um, metals that became uncorrelated, became uncorrelated. Because my assumption is they're going to come back. They're going to come right back in. So I'm, I scan these, and these with really low numbers, they're very much uncorrelated. And these are all metal ones. So what I'm also going to do is I want to look for something that's got some room between support and resistance and some kind of ATR. If their ATR isn't at least about a buck, I don't even want to look at them. It's only got three. Because these aren't moving. They're really hard to trade. They just don't move enough. So I'm taking, really only have three stocks I'm going to take a peek at um, that came out of this scan. Now there's other ways I'm going to find them. I'll wait for this to pop up. Come on. Now I'm going to take these. And this should show me their correlation up here, that they stay mostly correlated. Okay, now I'm going to undo this. This one's gone straight up. Um, I'm going to try to find something towards its bottom. This one's gone straight up like that along that trend line. It's a good one, but I want to find something towards the bottom. Okay, this one's pulled back. It looks like maybe it could jump, but it's pretty close to its high. Let's go there. Let's close that one. That one's already broke out and already moved up. This is what we're expecting for some of those. So I didn't find any really good correlation setup ones. So there's other things that I can look for. All right. I would like to find really simply all the metal stocks below their Bollinger Band. Okay. That's all I'm going to do right now. 
I'm going to say, I want a really easy trade. I'm going to look for just um, uh, Bollinger Band lows. This is all I really need to dial in right now. Um, I'm going to actually copy the one that's in here. These are just scans I make to get stuff. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to copy it. Where does it let me copy it? More copy. And I'm just going to change this. I'm just going to go to, it's kind of the same thing, BB Band. I want to know what the volume is, what the close is, what the ATR is. But instead of this, I just want a BB band. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to grab this because I didn't have this one all the way set up. BB band. BB band. Bollinger band function. Bollinger band bottom. Where's the bottom? That's all right. It's BOT. We can just grab it. That's all I needed. It is right there. Bollinger band. BB band. BOT. Okay. Cancel. Okay. It's BB band. BB band, BB band, BOT, and BOT bracket. Let's see if they have it down here, functions. BB band. Sorry to hold you up that I didn't have this done. BB band, bar sense. I'm looking for Bollinger band because I want to just grab one of these. Bollinger band, bottom. Bollinger band, bottom. Okay. And it should give me off that Bollinger band, bottom should give me what they are but I'm pretty sure uh, this is the we want the low or the close and I'm pretty sure it's 20 simple and 2 is a standard deviation it has to be greater than the low that's all I want to know I, I want it to, the low to be below there I don't want this in here I don't want this in here and I don't want to filter it okay I'm just gonna take this um, greater than the low where is it? Not a recognized constant. Yeah, low is. Count. Oh, close. Look what I spelled close wrong there. It was back one. So now I'm just going to go to explore. We're still on metals. And I'm just looking for any metal stock. Now below out of those 99 that are below its Bollinger Band. Because I didn't find any correlation ones I could use. So I'm just going to say computer kick me out these. And... They, I want to just see which ones are below there. It shouldn't reject any of them, but then we're just going to sort them by which ones we want. We'll open them because we're hoping these jump um, tomorrow morning and we'll have a good edge on them. And then I got a, a simple, simple, simple trade to do on them. Now we're going to go up here. We're going to grab this. The ones with the one on it are overdone. Now we got to have a good ATR. Okay. So this has a good ATR, ATR, good ATR. Good ATR, good ATR, good ATR, good ATR, um, good ATR. See, this gave me lots more candidates. Good ATR, good ATR. Most of these could already be back in their band. Their low was just below there. They didn't close below it. So we're just going to look at all these. Because these are ones I'm setting up for tomorrow. Why is Monsanto in there? Monsanto is not a metal stock. Eagle Materials is, but wonder why Monsanto came up in that list. So I didn't contain, I didn't keep this list. It's somebody else who did it. Um, and so we're looking at Mosaic. Why is Mosaic in there too? I'm looking for mainly silver ones. Newmont down there. Newmont was one I want to look at for sure. I missed one. Um, Allegheny, I, I or I think that's how they say that. I've I've traded that one a lot. I might peek at that one too. But I want, even though it didn't pop there. I'm going to take these bottom three right there and open those in addition um, and see what these look like. And I'm just trying to find me a good silver stock that's below. And all I'm going to look for is I'm going to hyper focus on the last three days are, are the last three days um, bullish or bearish. You know, I'm going to look for high volume down there. I want to see them in a bottoming pattern. OK, and I'm just going to be trying to find something that'll move here in just a minute these are ones that really i'm going to set up for real trading um come monday morning and i'm just i'm going through my monday morning list to try to find these because i'm not going to be available monday morning come on computer come on just waiting for it to catch up pause it okay so this is going to be an easy one on monday look at um it's already in an uptrend. This is just a classic pullback, but this one wasn't at the bottom of our Bollinger Band. 
This was the one I said, oh, I've traded that. That's become, came uncorrelated. Look at these last two days. The low from here to the low from here to the low from here slowed down. And I would like to see the volume pick up. Well, the volume did there. All right, there's one. So we got um, ATI should go on our list for, for Monday. Um, this one, let's hope they all don't. That one looks like I picked an uncorrelated one. They had to be below their Bollinger Band. And if I didn't, if I hit the wrong button and opened them, um, let's see if we have a bunch like that. It should have been there. Oh, I looked at this before. This is silver itself. Um, oh, new, no, this is Newmont Mining. I was checking out some stuff. Let's Let's close this off. I was just, that was a correlation thing I was looking at. Um, this is Newmont Mining. There's a great one. Look, big volume right there. And then all these are, are setting up for a bottoming pattern. I'll bet you that's right on a FIB one. This whole sector is going to rise, I'll bet you, over the next couple days. Um, and so if, if you want a good pick, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this would be the sector I'd be working. Um, this should be a FIB retracement. I'm just trying to find it in here. Okay, I should get the extension, but this is a retracement. Yeah, I thought so. 61% right on. You you sell one put and you buy lots of out-of-the-money calls on these. So one put, out-of-the-money calls. All right, this is a big drop, lesser drop. This one's coming into its bottom, this this gold mining one. Um, we could go check these some more. So we got Newmont Mining. Um Newmont, I don't really like that one. If they don't, I'm looking, all I'm doing is I'm looking at the volume down here. If the volume has a jump, not interested. This one, the volume's jumped down here, but it doesn't look as good as the other ones. The other ones had two to three days of sideways, and that means a bottom's coming in. There's one, though, that I like. Drop, drop, the volume picked up. But it, it's pretty high in its range. I, I was trying to find a nice bottoming one that feels safe. Like Newmont felt really safe. Vulcan Materials. Now, this is their correlation to, to silver up here. This thing that says correlation, that's their correlation to silver, and that one I don't need. And so I'm just looking at if they're correlated to silver or not. And um, I'm also looking at the volume at the bottom. And the more volume, the better off I'm going to be because that tells me an institutional bottom's coming in. Now, see that one? One, two, three. What is this one? Royal gold. Royal gold right here. This looks like one that's coming into a bottom. And look at the volume. It's been picking up right here, here, and here. Um, the volume that climbed on this side, you have to see where that came in. You can't really see it. What you do is you go to like a five-minute chart. You go to experts, attach, and this will just show the red and blue lines on here. Okay. Oh, look at that volume at the end of the day. Wow. Wow, that was right off the chart. That's what I thought it would be like. Yeah. See all their volume? Look. All the volume right here, boom. It, 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 this came in right away, but it was sucked right up at the bottom. Bingo, huge volume, sets a bottom. Bingo, huge volume. See, you were totally faked out by the higher time frame volume. This is a bottom uh, coming in on gold, okay? A short-term bottom, maybe not a long-term bottom, but there's a, a, a bottom coming in on gold, okay? And let's go down into here. Let's, let's grab this. Okay, there's another one like that. All of these, any one of these stocks that starts to run in pre-market, they go on your list and your whole trade, sell one put, two out of the money calls, it jumps and you close the, the put in one to two days and you're left with two free risk, uh, risk free out of the money calls. This whole sector is like that. So metals are, are rocking for um, next week and, and this is all I would do. I would do this, and I've been playing with this right here. Um, let's go in here. I'm just going to bring this up. It's going to let me look at some option stuff on here. This is um, their platforms change quite a bit, so I'm I'm learning how to set this up. But these are these are rocking trades, totally rocking trades. Um, for next week. Sell one put, buy out of the money calls, one to two days later, show, close the put, go out a couple months and try to find the ones that you want, okay? So this thing should be sitting up any second now. Come on. Let's grab this. I'm just waiting for it. Okay. 
Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, there, there are some steps I left out of this that I could really look at. I, um, one step, I could check the most seasonable stock would be the best, and I didn't go into that. So to determine, there, there's like four tricks I'm going to use here to determine this, which one's good. So um, this will be really, really interesting. Okay, so step one, scan for the bullish ones. We found it. We went through. I, I'm actually going to clean this up. Step one, look at CRB, CRB or GCC. Look for, we're going to make it simple. Look for bullish pattern. Look for bullish pattern. Bullish pattern. Okay, step two, scanning metals for uncorrelated or a bullish pattern or a bullish pattern. Um, example, BB band. Example, outside BB band. Outside BB band, heavy volume heavy volume at lows volume at lows okay and then um step three this is what's gonna push it in make sure to look step three look at the last three bars look at last three bars step three look at last three bars at last three bars three bars they should be slowing momentum slowing down in drop in drop okay um, and then step step four is this. What is the edge? Let, let's let's actually put down. I'm gonna put this down here. Trading edge. Really, the edge in this is this. You can see if it moved in pre market. In pre market, this is our edge. Pre market because there's a formula that you use that you can actually calculate out according to the move how far it goes. So you take the correlation number, the correlation of the commodity, commodity to the stock, commodity to stock. Okay. Once you figure out the correlation, example, example, 80%, 80%. They're 80% correlated. And let's just say something like, I'm going to make an assumption, FCX and high grade copper. Copper is um, up. One dollar, one dollar. Well, then FCX should run, should run eighty percent of its ATR, eighty percent of its ATR. This is really simple. You'll know right away that it's going to move. But under step four, there's some things that we can tell. Um, go to um, option chain, option chain, and look for look out three months, look out three months, out three months. Um, out three months, up three strikes, up three strikes on the calls, three to five strikes on the calls, five strikes on calls, and do the same on puts. Do same on puts, but look down. Look OTM, out of the money. Same on puts, look OTM. Okay, now watch. Now what I'm going to do, let's close this off. They changed a bunch of this on me. Um, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go to this flex document. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in here. I'm going to go here, and I want an option chain. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here, and you can get an um, option watch window. I can pop this on. I can pop it on, and it should give me an option chain. Okay, so now I'm just going to put in, like, FCX. All right, and I'm going to yank this clear over so I can look at it. Come on, give me back my cursor. I'm going to make this a huge screen. Okay, so I got FCX on here, and I'm going to go up three strikes, out three strikes. Okay, so it's trading right now at 32.45, so 32. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to come over here. Now, notice this is, what month is this that I'm on? Um, the month is, um, okay, I don't want this month. I want to go out a month. Oh, no, I'm already down a few months. Yeah, this is right here. This is four, so I want to go out three months. One month, two months, three months, right here. And then go out of the money. Um, we want to find 32, one, two, three. Okay, this is three strikes out of the money. It's 90 cents on the ask, okay? Now go over here. Let's do the same thing. We're going to come over same, same month, same exact month. So we were looking at the May, and 32 is where we are, and I'm gonna, that's down to, that's only... Um, 
I'm looking for the bid and ask a dollar ten. So if I go here at 32 and I go one two, um, you're looking at a price of on the ask of 203. Now I gotta double check. This is 45 more cents in the money. If I took the 45 away from it, it would be about evenly priced. So what we're looking for is this. If looking at a commodity, if looking at commodity, and this is from experience, commodity, commodities, the ask on the calls is always 20% higher. 20% higher. This is called this is called um, a volatility skew. Volatility skew. Okay, um, because commodities, we people are worried. People are worried that something will fail. People are worried that a crop will fail. People are worried of crop failures or whatever crop failure. On stocks, it's opposite. On stocks, the puts, the puts have a higher um, um, skew. They have a higher volatility skew. Now we can use this. We can use the price now. Use the price, and if higher if higher on one side if higher than normal then quote normal on one side than normal i know that there's a chance of a long-term movement there is a good chance there is a good chance of a long-term movement of a long-term movement movement okay so these are how they're set up so we go back and we grab these okay and you grab this. These are really good chance. These are really good ones to hit it. Okay, so this is one way that I can look at that. And all I'm doing is I'm eyeballing in here and saying, well, look, here's 32. Here's 32, and I'm going one. Here's two strike prices out. Well, the price is 123. Let's see, 32. So we'd be at the 30. What's it trading at? It's trading at 32.45. So we gotta go 33, 34. That's 123. If we come straight across here and we go from the 32, 1, 2, you're looking at um, the a bid price of 111. Well, they're about even because of that volatility skew. If you ever see these upside down, you'll get a huge guess at which way they're going. Well, that's, that is Freeport. Let's check on silver itself. Okay. We're going to go into silver and you can check this out. You can say, well, let's check out silver and let's go out clear into um i'm gonna go out a couple months so these are all threes fours i gotta scroll down a little bit okay here we want to go into about the fourth month silver is um the fourth month's right here and silver's trading at 27. if i take the 27 and it um there's a 2750 it's at 2783 one two three we're looking at 41 cents on the ask Okay. Now, if I go to right here, it's at 2750, one same month. Let's see if it'll grab it. Okay. Let's go right there, same month. I just want to look at it. 27, there's 26. Let's grab the next one. Come on. Okay. 27, one, two, three, 25. It's at 34 cents on the bid. Um, 34 cents and over here this one's at one two three that takes me out to a 29 it's at 56 that's about a 10 percent different no it's more than that it's about a 20 percent difference yeah that's pretty normal so they have no strong opinion for the long term on silver and um freeport mcnamary but you'll catch those sometimes the year silver ran the year the year silver ran from 22 all the way to 50 these were almost constantly double. They were double. The puts, you couldn't get rid of them. They were constantly double. So these are pretty fairly evenly priced. There's not a high probability of a run. But what I do is I look at those and I say, well, if they get up to double, they're, they're out of whack and I'll use them. That's one of the ways that I can tell if it's going to run over the long term. The other one is step five. You can look at seasonality. Look, um, look at... Um, the chart over um, look at chart over multiple months look at chart over um, 
over time over time by doing this there's a really easy way to do it this is why it's using this platform because it's really easy to see if i just go in here and i go to expert go expert properties and i come down here and i oops i go into here i go into here i uncheck these two what it will let me do is i can say well let's see first quarter and um what this will do is it will show me the chart pattern just in first quarter so i got to take some of these dots off and it lets me look at them real quick i can say oops i missed one i want those s's off there let's go down and grab one of these so now what i can do is okay it went down this one it's gone down there's two that it's gone down one it's gone sideways so one sideways two sideways okay three sideways four sideways and that's only a few years so i can load more i went through this earlier most of them were sideways to up sideways to up um, but we're at the bottom of our bones brand regardless we check this for seasonality we just say what's it going to do and this is gcc this is the commodity ones we wanted to really do silver or something like that um, but i would still state that even though we don't have a long seasonal bias in it because we were we were seeking a seasonable bias we don't have one but I still feel strongly that these will jump over the next couple of days because of the elections coming out in Spain. And they've got some problems. So we got the Spanish elections. All we really need to do is wait for that to move and we can jump in. Now the trade is going to be this. This is going to be our tradable instrument. Let's put this up here. Tradable instrument. What am I going to trade? Okay. I'm going to I'm going to sell puts. I'm going to sell one put and buy calls um buy calls otm out one strike if i can get away with it out one strike and i need to to figure out i want to pay for the calls pay for calls pay for calls with a one bar move with a one bar move now you see what you can do is you go minus one p minus one p minus one p this is the price of the stock that's what the pipe is plus two c plus two C. Now I'm going to come down here. Once it moves, once it moves, and, and this is rocking to do with even commodity options. You come down here and you go like this. You say um, trade management. Okay. Now what I'm going to do under trade management is when it jumps, I'm going to close minus one P, close minus one P, um, so minus one P. And then, and then I may sell minus one c above my, above the current one i own this will turn it into above me minus one c minus one c um minus one c above me this gets me to risk free this gets this gets me to risk free okay so that's an awesome little trade that's one of the ways i would set that up okay